good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. So today we're going to be finding out if Scary Terry is really real. Do you guys remember back in the playoffs when the Celtics had Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward out? We were out here calling Terry Rozier Scary Terry. He was having the best postseason uh, he's ever had. Obviously, he hasn't played in the postseason very much, but he was having a great postseason. And we all thought Terry Rozier was going to be the next great point guard, next big thing. Whatever team got him coming this offseason is going to be like really good. Is he going to be a starting caliber point guard? And then now recently when Kyrie Irving came back, he kind of came down to earth a little bit. Obviously, his role, you know, became very smaller. And now Terry Rozier is going to have the opportunity to show the world that he can be a really good point guard. Now, whether or not he does that or not, well, you know, remains to be seen. But today, like I said, we're going to be doing a Terry Rozier Hornets rebuild since you guys seem to want to see that team next. I did a poll. You guys voted for Terry Rozier Hornets, so we're doing that today. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoy the video and subscribe uh, if you haven't already. We are trying to reach 5K subs before the end of July. And once I do reach 5K, I'm going to be doing a giveaway because we're halfway to 10K. And I'm definitely going to be doing a giveaway at 5K. So, uh, but anyway, other than that, guys, Terry Rozier. So, He's obviously going to be the main show on this rebuild because he is a title of video. Saving night overall. Um, I'm not really sure how he's going to do in the simulation, but basically. And this Hornets team really doesn't have a direction. I mean, they do in a way, but you have guys like Malik Monk, Miles Bridges, and PJ Washington that are going to be maybe pretty good for you in the future. But right now, we really don't have anything. So, uh, definitely going to be using the G League to my advantage. This first season is probably going to be a you know just a chalk. It's really not going to do much of anything. It's really just we're probably going to scratch this out because I'm so I'm very tempted to send Malik Monk and Miles Bridges to the G League this season because like I said we're not going to be able to do much of anything really we're not making the playoffs and I just kind of want to have it to be the Terry Rozier show because I'm definitely going to be sending a couple players to the G League you have Jalen McDaniel's down here as well um, so I'm torn between it, whether or not I want to send Miles Bridges and PJ Washington there I think I'm going to send Malik Monk and pj washington to the g league and then we're going to run the rotation from there so now when we look at the rotation as it is let's rebuild it i want to run nine players and i just want to give taro zero the freedom to do whatever he wants this first season because like i said we don't really have any money to do anything so i just kind of curious i definitely want to start miles bridges though over batum batum's contract is notoriously one of the worst in the nba should have never ever have gotten the contract that he did and i want to say like i said i want to give taro zero just this whatever freedom he wants to just go out there and score the ball i just want to see what he'll do as the first option and then when we look to um let's see what it's looking like system proficiency three star rating at balance Can we go up to a three and a half anywhere nope so i'm going to go ahead and leave it at balance and then we'll also like i said make tarot zero the first preference as scoring the ball so i mean we're just going to go ahead and see how this goes i'm very curious to see how uh tarot zero will do in a larger role because i guarantee he will start and then malik monk and uh, PJ Washington, when they come back, are going to be huge contributors. But other than that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and simulate this first season. And let's see how uh, the Terry Rozier Hornets would do. As expected, we did not make the playoffs. Of course, we weren't going to. I knew we weren't going to. But this is where it comes interesting. How did Terry Rozier do as a number one option for this team? Is he a 19 million? Okay, 26.5 points per game. That is actually really good. But nevertheless, we really didn't have anybody on the roster that was going to take the ball away from Terry Rozier. But... I mean, if he goes out there and scores 26 and a half points per game, that's a pretty good contract. $19 million a year is not bad for a guy that can do that. But he shot 40% from the field. Uh, he shot 36% from three and 77% from the free throw line. So yeah, I mean, Heroes here just went out there and balled out, which I'm happy to see that. And now we can kind of put a team around this guy, I guess. Like, uh, And hopefully we can succeed a little bit better uh, with Heroes here than the Hornets did with Kimba, right? So draft lottery let's go ahead and see we are going to have a high draft pick which is great and we end up going all the way to number six which that's somewhat unfortunate but that's all right james Brengo is our head coach i'm going to fire our trainer of course and i'm also going to fire our head coach go with a good trainer and then let's get a um let's get rick carlisle I, that's somebody i don't get very often let's get both those guys and rick carlisle will be the new head coach for this team and now we have the six pick second two second rounders so i'm not even sure who i want to take I honestly do actually I know exactly who I want but I don't know if he would be all the way at number six so let me try to trade up for him uh I did get Anthony Edwards in the Wizards rebuild uh happy fourth of July guys by the way I hope you guys had a good one uh but six pick let's go ahead and try to jump up all the way up to let's say let's go to try to go for number two I guess let's try to go for number two okay that's not gonna do it is there a player that we can trade do you want Batum's awful contract probably not uh, do you want Cody Martin or Jalen McDaniels? I'll give you Cody Martin. 
no how about a future first that will never matter in this video no okay so you know what i'll just stay put at the six pick and hopefully he falls to us i doubt he will but let's just see what's available so number six let's see what we can get rj hampton i mean that's great and all but i really don't want rj hampton i'm sorry i mean like i said this is a terry rozier and uh they got james wiseman which is the guy i wanted he dropped all the way to number four so if i just traded up to number four i probably could have got him but we do have this thing that we can use in the trade finder that he'll probably get offered to me anyway uh who did he get just taken by i forgot who he got taken by but let's see if we can just get him uh is it james wiseman they want to give me bow bomb arjanovich as well that's a w all right welcome to the hornets james wiseman let's go ahead and uh draft somebody in the second round as well since we have a high draft pick in the second round um tyler bay uh, isaiah joe javante smart chris smith i'm gonna take ty john alexander don't even know who that is but uh yeah i didn't really know who any of those guys were but rookie signing uh probably won't sign any of those guys but we're definitely bringing james wiseman to the roster player options Blake Monk definitely want to accept him, but Tum accepts his awful option. And then let's go to qualifying offers. Dwayne Bacon. Uh, you know, I wouldn't mind bringing him back, but we'll see. Negative. Let's see how much money we have in negative salary cap space. Negative $61 million. So let's go ahead and renounce like a lot of these guys. I honestly don't think I'm going to bring back anybody in uh, free agency. And then there's another player I just want to get rid of. And that is Nicholas Batum. So Devontae Graham and Terry Rozier. Blake Monk. Uh, Batum and Miles Bridges, PJ Washington, who's going to be the power, starting power forward, and we have a ton of centers that we can use, uh, that we can get rid of. So let me first. I did uh, resign Willie Hernan Gomez because, or Willie Selena Gomez. I think that's funny to say too. But Batum is the first one to bite the dust. I mean, we just have to get rid of this awful contract. There's no reason to have it. So let's just go to Landry Shamit from the Clippers. Um, you know that's so realistic, but I, I definitely want to do it. Landry Shamit. 23 years old, fits the timeline of the team. I feel bad if I'm taking him just for like, you know, what if we just offered like three second round picks as well? Because I feel like this is a, you know, somewhat makes it somewhat more realistic, but not really at the same time. But you know what? That's all right. So Landry Shaman's going to be a nice backup point guard. Devontae Graham is not, you know, not quite ready to be my backup point guard either. Well, Landry Shaman's is going to be a nice backup shooting guard. Miles Bridges. Um, we definitely need a backup power forward. The center spot is loaded. So uh cody zeller is going to be the next guy to bite the dust because i don't need him either so let's see if we can get something for him um miles plumley beverly darius miller okobo i saw larry S. jr and i don't mind this actually but i'm also just going to be i would be okay with just getting rid of him in general so i'm gonna go ahead and take this trade from the jazz and we're gonna have let's see how much money we have now 46 million dollars so i mean we definitely could sign a really good player but i probably won't do that uh actually i might sign a really good small forward if i can find one so let's see what's out there best available players let's see what we got as far as free agency is concerned if 2k will load Kawhi leonard 98 overall Kawhi leonard obviously that would definitely change the team like crazy but um i don't think i'm gonna do that i think i'm gonna go ahead and just stick with i don't think Kawhi would ever go to the hornets so as much as it would be funny if i did that i'm not going to so we get DeMarcus Cousins, uh, Buddy Heald, Paul Millsap, Brandon Ingram. Actually, somewhat like the idea of getting Ingram if we can. Uh, Karis Avert, Sabonis. Um, I mean, we have the money to spend. Nikola Miritich at the small forward spot. Uh, not going to be back in the NBA for a while. I just don't understand, guys. I don't understand why Miritich wanted to go. He is such a good player in the NBA, and he just went overseas. It's so sad, but it's all right. So... Brandon Ingram's looking like a good option for me, honestly. $28 million a year. I mean, why not, right? I mean, we can go ahead and offer to him. He's probably going to get matched. But as far as backups are concerned, we still need a backup point guard, a backup small forward, and a backup power forward, or even a starting small forward, I would say. And probably a backup power forward and a backup point guard. So let's see. Uh, Siakam. I don't want to get Siakam. I get him a lot, so let's not do that. Uh, let's go Kid Gilchrist. Bring him back. Buy Alitza. Josh Green. Let me look for a backup point guard instead. I like the idea of having a backup point guard. Um, Isaiah Thomas. De'Anthony Melton, 22 years old, fights the timeline of the team. I like that idea. And uh, like I said, let's see if we get Brandon Ingram. Um, the Melicans have just, or <laughs> the Melicans, uh, the Pelicans have decided to match your offer, so we don't get Brandon Ingram. That's all right. Uh, Cousins. I'm kind of tempted to sign him for one season, but I'm not gonna do it probably. Jalen Brown at the small forward spot uh you know what let's offer it i guess and let's just see if we can get him uh he accepts another offer so he goes back to boston and uh we're just striking out but that's okay i kind of like our you know i kind of like our team anyway 
So I didn't really need Bobby Portis. We could bring him here and have him come off as uh, come off the bench at the power forward spot. Uh, so let's do that. We'll do that. Bobby Portis, welcome to the Hornets. If we can get you, and just like that, we got Bobby Portis and uh, what's his name, and we're gonna have cap space. So I mean, we're just gonna go in and see how this goes. It may not go well at all, but that's all right. So Bobby Portis, move him to power forward, and uh, looks like we have a nine-man rotation now. So that's gonna be good. Uh, let's go ahead and skim through this get to the rotation that way I can show you guys and see what we're gonna do Dwayne Bacon comes back as well 81 overall Malik Monk 81 overall PJ Washington So we definitely have a better team for sure a lot of young players in this roster We're starting the rebuild process and I think it's looking good so far a lot better than what Michael Jordan would have done in real life Right because he just has not been very good as an owner at all and I really don't understand why they seriously let uh, Kimba walk for nothing. I mean, I guess they got Terry Rozier out of it, but they could have traded him at the trade. I did not mean to load this draft class. Uh, let me load the right one after this. Uh, I loaded 2022. I need the 2021. But guys, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, actually, this is how you do this. So for you guys that have always asked me, because I get this question a lot. Obviously, it's probably not very relevant anymore. But I always got that question like, how do you load a draft class? when it's not giving you the option to just load it, right? Like how it just offered me to load a download and draft class, but you go to prospect scouting or uh, where is it? Um, maybe it's not here yet. It might not be here yet. So let me just go ahead and I'll show you guys. So training camps, we have two. Let's go ahead and give this one to PJ Washington and we'll give the other one to what's his name. Uh, honestly, I'm surprised Terry Rozier didn't win most improved player averaging 26 points. Cause yeah, that was pretty, that was kind of a W of a season for him. But uh, we didn't get most improved form. But all right, this is how you do it. So you go to scouting, prospect scouting, and you load down on draft class. That's it. That's all you do. And then now oh, I got the right draft class. So now let's look at the nine minute rotation we're about to have. We have a good head coach in Rick Carlisle, I feel like. So uh, we have Terry Rozier, Malik Monk, Miles Bridges, PJ Washington, James Wiseman, Bobby Portis off the bench, Anthony Melton, Willie Hernan, Selena Gomez, and Landry Shamit. So yeah, very good bench. I still want to give Terry Rozier a lot of minutes, honestly. So let me try. And uh, I like, oh, let's try to take some minutes away from, I don't need Bobby Portis coming off the bench and, you know, having that many minutes, but we'll give Terry Rozier about, let's say, uh, 35. And uh, we'll see how that goes. I kind of want to give um, my starters a little bit more minutes too. I want James Wiseman playing some minutes and I want like Monk playing some minutes. So we'll do that. And uh, coach game plan. Let's see what we got here. Um, let's just go ahead and, you know, let's still make uh, Terry Rozier the first option. Just kind of want to do it just for the fun of it. Three and a half rating at balance. Uh, probably will leave it there. I'm gonna go ahead and simulate the next season and let's see how the second season goes. At the end of the second season, we went 47 and 35, which is actually pretty great for the Hornet standards. Cause I mean, we weren't really in anywhere. Had no idea where the team was going, but we had 19 points from Malik Monk, 18 points from Terry Rozier, 15.6 and seven rebounds from James Wiseman, 13.6 from Bobby Portis off the bench. Miles Bridges did his thing. 13.4 PJ Washington had 10 points and eight rebounds. Anthony Melton, Hernan Gomez, and Landry Shamit, they all did their thing. So, I mean, this roster was a cohesive unit and looked like it worked well. For the Pacers side of things, let's go ahead and see what they got going on over there. They have Zach Levine now. It looks like they might have traded Malcolm Brogdon for Zach Levine or something like that because I don't see Brogdon anymore. And those two have similar contracts, and I would be right. Uh, he is now on the Chicago Bulls. Zach Levine's on the Pacers. So, let's see if we can beat the Indiana Pacers in the first round. We're a very young team going up against a very veteran-like Indiana Pacers team we're down 3-0 so I mean it makes a little bit of sense but uh let's just see if we can beat the Indiana Pacers uh looks like okay we might win at least one game in the series right that would be great okay we do 95 to 122 could we make the Indiana Pacers though blow a 3-0 lead that would be absolutely just uh, amazing and uh you know what I'd be very happy but I don't know if that you know is even plausible uh you know we might win this one though and it's looking like a pretty close game we do lose by two points Miles Bridges at 29 so I mean, we got we got a good thing going here. Uh, I think I could see myself making one or two moves to just legitimate, legitimate, make this roster legitimate. That's what I'm trying to say. So then we have Atlanta and Indiana, Boston, Toronto, Oklahoma City, and Utah or Denver. And Denver moves on. And Denver, Oklahoma City, Indiana, and Boston. 3-0 for Boston. And just like that, they win in four games. So it looks like Kimball Walker's in the NBA Finals. 2-0. Is Kimba Walker gonna be a champion? He is, and Gordon Hayward, surprisingly, is the finals MVP. As long as Gordon or uh, Kimba is still on the roster, of course. I don't know if he is or not. Let me go check just so you know I don't sound dumb for saying he's a champion now. Um Yeah, he's still there. Okay, cool. Now, 
Let's get into this offseason and uh, Carmelo Anthony retired or they retired Carmelo Anthony's uh, number for the Denver Nuggets, which is nice. But for the draft lottery side of things, we do uh, what pick do we have? We have um, where are we at? We have the 19th pick, so we could use that trainer. We have a good trainer. Is there a better trainer, though? We do. Scott Sean Navarro. I'm going to go ahead and fire my trainer and get a uh, better trainer. That way we have more on top potentials to use. And then for the draft, the 19th pick overall. Uh, 19th pick, you know, I'm very, you know, I might just let the, you know, computer take this one over. I don't know who I'd get, and I don't know if they're going to contribute right away. Nefella, Dante, I'll go ahead and sign them, and then we're going to, of course, accept every single one of these, bring them all back, and I think we should still have some cap space, honestly. I think we do, because we have a lot of young players. No one's really due. Oh, Malik Monk is definitely due for a big contract, and I think I will give it to him. And uh, $9.75 million. Let's see, uh... Boban, I'm going to renounce him and Dwayne Bacon. So we have $20 million, excluding Malik Monk's cap hold. So, um, Terrazier, Danny Melton, Landry Shamit, Miles Bridges, PJ Washington, Bobby Portis, and James Wiseman, and Willie Selena Gomez. So, I mean, do I just keep it the same? Do I, you know, go for somebody? Look, let's look at the free agency pool and let's see what we got out here. So, as far as free agents are concerned, we have guys like Tatum that I'll never be able to get my hands on, Donovan Mitchell. As much as I would love to get Donovan Mitchell, who will probably get matched. Darren Fox will get matched. Markkinen is someone I could probably get, but I like P.J. Washington as it is right now. So the free agency is not, you know, Malik Monk is definitely going to be back, I think. I think definitely think I'm bringing back Malik Monk. So no one in a free agency that I could probably get. So if we're wanting to make an upgrade somewhere, it's probably going to have to be through a trade. Now, what do I want to look for? Tarot Zero is definitely the point guard. Malik Monk is definitely going to be the shooting guard. I'm not against having a better starting small forward, and I'm not against having a better starting power forward, but I do like P.J. Washington and what he brings. James Wiseman, I want to keep as my starting center. So if I could find a better forward, I'm not against it. So let's just see. Well, let's look around the league and just see if we could find one. Bagley, uh, probably not going to be possible to trade for. Uh, maybe. Actually, might be able to get him for P.J. Washington. Marvin Bagley is not someone I get very often, so I might come back to this trade. They want P.J. Washington straight up for him, so I might come back to that. That's not a guy I get very often. R.J. Barrett would be nice as well. Um, 82 overall. Definitely not sure why he isn't better. They want Terry Rozier for him, so not going to do that. And uh, LeBron James, obviously not going to be able to get him. DeRozan, no. Uh, Porzingod, could I get Porzingis? Could I just? No, okay, no. Not even happening. Not even going to happen um let's see what else we got michael porter jr wouldn't be bad i actually like the idea of getting porter jr might come back to that zion's probably gonna be impossible to trade for yeah uh piston siku wouldn't be bad um honestly guys i think i might go Jarrett culver i might go back to that marvin bagley trade hachimura who else would who i mean we could get chris milton who else would did i see i, I was just talking about him and it just i totally draw a blank now jaron jackson jr i could probably get as well Maybe, actually. He is an 87 overall now. Um, Jaron Jackson Jr. wouldn't be bad at all. Let me see what he's worth. Terry Rozier, Miles Bridges, and P.J. Washington. I definitely don't want to trade both of them. P.J. Washington, a first-round pick. We get Jonas Valanciunas as well. I mean, we're increasing the starting power forward spot. I, I think I got to do this. I think I have to. I mean, we'll trade our first-round pick. I really don't want Jonas Valanciunas by any means, but you know what? We'll get him in the trade. And we could probably flip him for something else, maybe. So, Jaron Jackson Jr. is going to be the starting power forward now. Bobby Portis is going to be, you know, still backing him up. We still got the opportunity to bring back Malik Monk still. Um, and where is Jonas Valanciunas? We really don't need him, honestly. So, uh, unless we want to have him as the backup, which I don't. What is What could Jonas Valanciunas and Bobby Portis in a first-round pick get me? So, could I even increase their starting small forward spot as well? Because I'm trying to go all in. Bagley um that would be nice but we probably can't do that bojan would be nice but not gonna try for that let me go back in the trade finder or what was i trying what, what was the other guy i saw i think he was a starting small forward rj barrett was someone we could have gotten uh kevin durant michael porter jr that's the guy i was talking about they want jaron jackson for him uh if i could get this done without trading jaron jackson this would be a w but i don't know if it's gonna work so could i give them Jonas? Valanchunas, and I don't want Will Barton. Okay, Will Barton will have to be in the trade, I guess. Could we do this? Could we get Michael Porter Jr. from them? And no, they don't want to do it. How about a second round pick? No. How about I throw in another first rounder? And no. Okay, so we're not going to get Michael Porter Jr. That's all right. So, um, not be able, not going to be able to get him. Looking too much into Nikola Miritich, Brandon Ingram. 
Can I get Brandon Ingram, James Wiseman, Terry Rozier, or Jaron Jackson Jr.? So I don't want to trade any of those guys. So I guess I'll just leave Miles Bridges. And uh, Jonas Valanciunas, I guess, can be the backup center. I mean, I don't know what else to do. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll do something like that. Bring back Malik Monk. And this was kind of a W offseason, guys. I don't think it went bad at all. So I'm going to go ahead and just simulate this next season. Let's see how it goes. And hopefully uh, we are in better playoff position and can win a championship. So towards the end of the season, we just started losing like every game. We went 41 and 41. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to stand for that. I'm not going to end the video like this. I think when Jonas Valanciunas leaves, I think the chemistry will be back. Because I really didn't like Jonas Valanciunas being on the team. I didn't think it really fit very well. But here were the player stats. I'm going to go ahead and simulate another season. Run this through again, and Terry Rozier has fallen all the way to the bottom to 11 points per game. So he has fallen down to earth. That's right, guys. So other than that, guys, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and simulate another season. This is ridiculous. I'm not ending it this way. So let's see if we can bounce back and make the playoffs this time around. Despite the fourth season, we still didn't go that. We still didn't have that great of a record. So maybe I should have never traded PJ Washington. I should have just kept it at, kept at it. But I liked the addition of Jaron Jackson Jr. and thought he was going to take us to the next level, and it just never happened. But Blake Monk led the way with 20 points per game. James Wiseman had 18 and 8. You know, Miles Bridges had 16, 14, 13, and 10. So, yeah, I mean, we are in the playoffs. So, I mean, we can't be too mad. We're going to be facing Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Milwaukee Bucks. So, let's see if we can beat them at all. They're up 1 out to start. 2, okay, we even it up with them. Can we go up 2-1? No, they do. 2-1 for them. 3-1, and we're going to get beat in 5 games here, it looks like. So, let's see if we can come down from a 3-1 lead. Uh, it would be absolutely a miracle if we could. But that would be awesome at the same time. So 2K, can we do it? Can we make the Bucks blow a 3-1 lead? And no, we're going to lose here by three points. So despite us not winning the championship, I still had a lot of fun with this rebuild. I think the Charlotte Hornets, we all, as we all know, might not make, nine, might not be making the playoffs for a while, guys. So uh, words are so hard, guys, today for me. So sorry if I just like started like crazy in this video. But we have Brooklyn and Atlanta, Denver and Los Angeles. Are the Brooklyn Nets going to win the championship 2-0? 3-0 and looks like Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are going to bring a chip to Brooklyn. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, but this is Crushables and I'm saying peace.